assignment, we're going to take the cube and turn it into like a room or a uh, uh, architectural environment. Okay, so I'm going to ask you that you kind of pay attention here. Uh, so the first thing you need to do, and I apologize, I don't have the actual cube from which I did my example. I couldn't find it. So we're going to have to, you know, kind of uh, adapt a little bit. But what I want you to do is take your cube, your rough, and just open it up in such a way that uh, when you look inside you can you will definitely see some of it uh, meaning that we're going to pretend that we're like a little person you know maybe like this tall and that person is looking inside and they're going to be looking inside using the same specs we use for that garden in other words they're going to actually be further away by the same amount as the depth of the cube I think if I remember right it's 32 feet away so uh, you're going to be 30 feet, 32 feet away in a particular spot, okay? Uh, and you can actually um, look into the, I mean literally kind of bring this closer to you, to your eye, and look inside and close one eye, because otherwise you don't see, otherwise it's confusing, and see what that looks inside because, sorry, what that uh, ceiling lines look inside to, um, to figure out your drawing, okay? To help you figure out your drawing. Um, so let's put that there. Uh, now these things are going to look a little messy because I did them on graph paper. Uh, if you wanted to use graph paper, you could. Uh, it's one eighth to the little square. But really all you need graph paper is just to determine the basic front grid. So it almost becomes a little confusing later on. Uh, because once you do that, then everything else is not on the grid. Um, so it's up to you, but you can just, you know, maybe use it underneath as a, as a, as a base. Um, okay, so if you look at your um, old drawings from the cube, particularly the first one that shows the sequence, what you want to do is like pick one of the, well, it, you know, if this is this one, this face, then figure out what that face is in your uh, sequence, so to speak. Okay. Now remember that your two, that your four squares are pairs, and the, and one shape is kind of flipped up the opposite way. Um, and we're gonna. So let's assume it's this one. We're gonna pick a spot that uh, is gonna be. If this cube is 32 feet by 32 feet, this spot is gonna be 22 feet from the left and six feet high, so this person is actually taller. Um, and translate it into inches for, our, for the purposes of our drawing, which would be an eighth inch drawing scale. Uh, that would be five and a half inches from the left and one and a half inches up, okay? So let's see. Uh, and the idea here is that, even though this is showing a two-point perspective, that you need to reconstruct the shape of the outside of your cube on these faces of the cube. Uh, but yeah, this is these two points, so don't get confused by that. Um, essentially, the final drawing will look um, something like this, where you have, you know, just like we did with the garden, where you have your floor, which is the square, you're going to have your grid there, which is going to help you determine things. It's going to help you determine, for example, where your verticals are here. So, for example, this object is in the midpoint of that distance, and once you have the grid, it's very helpful to find that. Um, as a whole, you're going to have your cube be kind of, that's the outside, I mean the front, and then you're going to have the back, right? And then you're going to have your, your lines converging there. Now, we don't do the top part, right? We just do one. So that kind of disappears, and that's why um, in your final you could, I think in the in I learned it shows it vertical, but as a layout you could put it horizontal, it might fit a little better. Um, the center of this cube, the neat thing about diagonals, we're going to talk about this, is that they behave just like any other line, and so if I have a cube that's in perspective and my lines are in perspective, the center point of that cube is determined by connecting the opposite diagonals so from say from the lower left hand corner to the upper right hand corner and I do the same on the other side 
and where they meet, okay, so that's in the front, that's in the back, where it meets this other line, I get my, my center of the cube, because that's crucial, right, to then connect all your lines. Um, okay. So what you do want to do, the first step is to draw, you know, draw your section as a kind of, you know, it's a little bit of a, like a little snaky, snaky line that goes all around and get that down and then from there connect all these points to the center of the cube. Because uh, all of a sudden, you know, this side and this side and the back side are going to be all, you know, within this larger square, right? This being the right side, the left side and so forth. See if I can simplify it a little bit. Um, the, f um, the first thing you want to do probably is simply draw the front of your cube. Once you open it, uh, again, this is an imaginary piece of glass, but you do have this line, which again is a true dimension or a true shape because that's touching your, your plane of representation. Uh, so in this example, once I draw my uh, square, which I think is an 8 by an 8 square, so actually if you do it horizontal, uh, the final might be a little tight, right? It's only a quarter inch to the sides. Um, rather if you do it vertical, so maybe that's why you want to put horizontal. But anyway, so this design would be that this face is the face of the cube, right? So if it's, um, so the first line I would do here is actually draw my section in the front, right? That's kind of like my roof line, so to speak, okay? Right? And that's in front. That's your true front section. Uh, everything else is going to change, but that doesn't change. So when you have your box, uh, actually, let me step back for a second. Um, the very first thing, actually, once you have your square, is to determine where your vanishing point is, right? And we talked about it being. Um, being 22 feet or five and a half inches and what was it? Six feet or yeah I think it's one and a quarter but we can double check that it's it's, um, it's spelled out I think in the instructions you know I learned so that becomes your horizon line and that's your that's your vanishing point right there okay so that's where everything is going to go in terms of the box itself, not in terms of your internal lines, not the lines that go to the center, but the lines that define the floor. Um, okay. So with the same thing that we did, that we did for the um, for the garden, this is we're going to establish first the out, outline of the box. Well, let me just look for that dimension so that you can have it all oh, here. It is. Okay, so yeah, in true scale, I mean in actual size, that's one and a half inch, the height of the person. Okay. And again, it's a eight inch square, right? So once I have this, um, the next thing is to establish the back side of that wall, the back corner, right? And we do it. Uh, we do it using the same process that we used. In other words, we take these six feet and we half it. Okay, it's really just a trick, but it, but it works. So once you half that, you get this line. Once you get that line, that, you know, from, from these converging lines, you get the square in the back. And again, it's shifted because it makes it for a more interesting, you know, perspective. Um, otherwise, things start to overlap.
Okay, so now I have a box. I have, you know, the floor, which is very important. I have the first section. So the job now is to get this section or whatever it's mirror image on this side, on the back side, and on the left side. And to do that, you need to pretty much establish the grid uh, in perspective. Uh, that's where all the diagonals uh, work comes into play. So let's do it like a really, really simple example. Let's say I want to find out, okay, you have this section here in the middle, right? So this line, even if it's mirror, is going to be somewhere here on the side as well, right? We know that. Uh, so we need to find the midpoint here, which is a midpoint in perspective. Uh, let's see, we can also do something else first. We can divide the front in the, into the grid, right, into fours. And we can do the same process here. And then with the diagonal again, we're going to get these points, which are going to give us the tile pattern, right? It's not very precise because it's done by hand. With this, we definitely want to use the ruler, by the way. Um, so this is the center of my floor, so that's also going to be the center of my wall back here, okay? You guys still following? Right? It's just a matter of diagonals. At this point, everything is a matter of diagonals. You could find everything about the cube, every point, using diagonals. Um, you could do a much more complicated construction, which we'll do for the two point, but for this one, you don't need to. So once I have that point here, the midpoint, um, I just raised that. Okay, so that's now in the side. Uh, let's just, let's see. Let's go back to our little design. Uh, so our little design so shows that we started out here, right? That's our first line, this big division. So now we go to the side and it kind of goes up and then that vertical and then so forth. So let's just say, where is this point, right? That's the next one which is going to connect from this point. So now I need to find out how it moves on, okay? So we're going to find out that spot. That's in the middle and about halfway of the halfway. It's at the same height as that. Um, so there's various things you can do. For example, now that we have found the middle here, and I brought it up, uh, I can do, for example, this. I can bring over this point right here, and where it's the corner, I project it. You follow? So where it meets that line, that's actually now where this other line is going to go. So if I just if I do this little bit right here, that's now the equivalent of this line in perspective in that box, right? Um, now I have to continue. It goes down, right? So where is the other spot here? I could do again another thing. I could project this over here. And if you notice, what I just did is basically divide the side into fours, right? And now I project here, and when it hits the midpoint, that's my vertical line. Now it's, here it's going to get a little tough because this is the first half in the front, this is the second half in the back. Um, so let's take a look at this. So, the, so we, we have already done this. Right, we were able to go up and then straight down. Now we need to go to the middle line this way, the height, and also in the middle of this space. So the next spot is this one. Um, another thing I could have done is to, for example, find this vertical is to draw two diagonals. And again, I'm too far out. Uh, to draw two diagonals from opposite corners of the square. Let's verify that. So if I draw a corner from here, see how that matches that line? So, you know, different ways of finding stuff. Um, so once again, we're saying now that it's going, 
back straight, in other words, parallel to the top and the bottom, and it's from the mid, from that point here. Uh, I'm sorry, first we have to find this one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. First we have to find the other one. Uh, so I could do various things again. I could try to split this area to find the midpoint here, and or I already have that information actually. If I take this line, I already know that this point is at the big point there, right? Because these are all divisions. So I could simply raise this up, right? And what I've just done is now split that half into two more halves, right? I could have done that here too. And if you notice, these lines nicely match my diagonal. And here not so much. <laughs> but, you know, you can start seeing this grid. Okay, so because now I have this line, which is the half point between this and this, I can do another projection from the center here. at that point we were looking for, which was this point. Oops. Okay, we were looking for that point which is between the middle and the back and exactly in the middle vertically. Okay. So what I did again is, because I knew that was the middle of the whole thing, now I had to find the middle between that middle and the back, and we did it various ways. I mean, you could do it with diagonals, but anyway, we found it. So that's my next line, right there. Okay. Now the last one is really easy because I know it's parallel. It's parallel to my top, it's parallel to my bottom, and it's just one module. Okay, do you see that? That's the last bit I need to find out on that side because I'm moving this way, right? So it's parallel to this, it's parallel to that, it's just connecting simply that point to that point. It's just one little module and I already have that information because these are all my horizontals, right? So you can see it's already here. So that's that last bit. So essentially, oops, I'm still out again. So essentially, I just recreated this section, which was a flat section in the front, on the side, in perspective, in the correct position, okay? It's kind of mirror, right? It's a, it's, it's a mirror image. It's not actually taking this and going like this. It's more like taking this and flipping it on the side. Uh, but you can see the symmetry. So this piece is this piece. This line is obviously this line. That line is this line, and then this horizontal line is this line. Okay, so it's a little, you know, it's kind of like finding your dots. And uh, so now I could continue all around it, and then I, the next one would be the, the square in the back here, and then the square on the side. And once you have the basic information, you can carry that over to the sides. Once you've found that you know, nice snail thing, snailing thing, suction, you know, it's like this wireframe that snakes around, then all you do is connect all the points to your center. And here we don't have to center yet. So I'm going to skip now directly to that part. Um, once again, you pick a corner in the back and you pair it with an opposite corner in the front. So you go like that. And now I take this spot and I pair it with that one um, and I find my center okay so all the lines are gonna converge there there's no other way okay so what I would do what I what I would do is then connect them all and then go back with a piece of trace to figure out which are visible and which are not in other words in a joint like this what happened was that I had all these other lines too and now I can I see them, but because um, I forget where they are, but there's, there were other lines. So, but I drew them all. You can see, oops, 
um, I drew them all and then I went back in and then I started looking, okay, which one is hidden, which one is in the front. Um, but that's just the way I go because I don't know and it would be really hard to try to right off the bat know what is what because you have crossings, right? Um, so what you would do at this point is simply connect all these dots, right? So that's the first one. That, that, like that. So what I'm going to do is just solve these first two sides. Okay, literally, I just take all these corners, because that's what you did, right, with all your triangles. Okay, I think I did them all. Yeah. So now, what I would do is, with a trace, um, I would try to visualize what's in front and what's in the back and because I probably know this now I think I can figure it out and remember you're very low right you're this little guy well actually six feet tall but uh, or rather more like here right in front and so you're like underneath this structure so of course I start again with the thing that's in the very very front I mean this is there's no way around having that be seen completely because that's in the very front uh, plane and then I can just use my intuition maybe of my common sense and I know that okay if I can see the center I can likely see it because I am to the right of it right I'm actually moved off of it to the right so I can probably you know this is probably a safe bet that this triangle I see completely Okay. Now this triangle right here, it's going to be hidden by, in part by this first one. So this one, I think it's going to stop. And this one, the same thing. Right? Instead of continuing, it stops there. Okay, so now we move on. Again, this is in the front, so of course I see the whole thing there. Now this one, I do see it. But then here, this whole part is hidden, so it stops there. And then moving on, all of a sudden, because this goes pretty down here, I know I see that, but everything else behind is going to be hidden. Uh, and then the only other thing you want to do is make sure you have your, um, your walls. Oops. Okay, so what I just did, I just did two sides, okay, I didn't do the rest, but that's... That's the process. Um, okay, I know it's a little rushed, and um, you know and we haven't had time to really um, discuss it in detail. But uh, but the principle of finding your diagonals, finding everything that you need through once you have the main box through these diagonals, is uh, is, is actually quite intuitive, and you can you can really figure out everything. So just start. Let's see. How you do? Technically, it's due Monday, right? Technically, um, but see how you do, okay? Because uh, I, I was supposed to present this last last Monday, but I didn't have time. Okay, do you have any questions on this one? Um, you know, it's a combination of like looking at the thing. One eye, put your eye where you think. You could actually mark it. Um, you, you can actually mark in the back there what that spot is, so that you can align your you know, your sight with it. Um, and um, see if there is something that you should absolutely... Oh, okay, here are the instructions. Actually, this is important. Um, take a look. This should be part of the notes. It pretty much explains, like, the basic steps. Um, and, um, and then your layout can be either like this, in which case you'll have a a little bit of empty space, but that can be shown as a light box. Um, no, that's it. All right. Thanks, guys.